The universe was created on the backs of hydrogen and helium, but they're not so common on Earth due to market forces. Science comedian Brian Mallow takes us on the journey through the implosions and explosions of their story. Enjoy! Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They've ranged from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate, any topic that geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides at auto advance every 15 seconds. The talk you're about to hear was recorded live at one of the featured Ignite events around the world. In the beginning, well, not the very beginning, we join the expanding universe already in progress. When we open, it's expanding at an alarming rate. And it's hot. It's so hot, parallel universes are trying to get perpendicular. They're displaying their wormholes. I'll say no more. Our universe is young, virginal, untouched by matter even, until it was cool. Then, electrons, protons, and neutrons condensed like dewdrops on a sparkly new continuum. Now today, the market is saturated. We have over 100 natural elements, few synthetics. But just after the Big Bang, there were only two elements that mattered. Let's take a look at the numbers. 93% of the atoms in the universe are hydrogen atoms. The rest are pretty much helium. There's a little bit of schmutz. Don't worry about it. It comes out. With <laughs> With no competition, hydrogen is calm, cool, and uncollected until gravity came along like a third-party app, ushering in Universe 2.0. And it's all about connectivity, networking, trying to get hydrogen to interact in exciting new ways. Most importantly, as helium factories, which we call stars. These factories went online all over the universe, billions and billions of them, and uh, to this day, helium production remains the number one industry of the universe. You should know who you're working for. After they produce helium, the factories go on to produce all the higher elements. Then they go offline in a spectacular display that also serves as a distribution system sharing user-generated content for free. Now, let's fast forward to a local market where things are very different. Hardly any hydrogen or helium at all. The atmosphere is nitrogen and oxygen. The crust is iron and oxygen and cream filled, I think. And what happened? What can account for this stunning loss of market share of hydrogen and helium, the most popular elements in the universe? Ouch. The Hindenburg was a PR disaster for hydrogen. It completely lost the balloon market. I can't think of another event that so dramatically changed how we feel about an element. But this doesn't explain helium. It's not the answer we're looking for. The truth is, hydrogen and helium are the lightest elements in the universe. They're so light, the Earth has trouble hanging on to them. The question isn't, why is there so little hydrogen and helium, but why is there any left on Earth? Well, in the case of hydrogen, it's because hydrogen hooks up with heavier elements. What you call water, I call two hydrogen atoms in a threesome with an underage oxygen atom. And don't even get me started on polysaccharides. But poor celibate helium doesn't bond. It doesn't form compounds. It's inert. It's aloof. It's standoffish. That's why we call them noble gases, which is better than calling them gas holes. So with nothing to hang on to, all the primordial helium has left the Earth. The only reason we have helium on Earth today is because it's a product of the radioactive decay of uranium and thorium. And most of that escapes, some of it is trapped in uh, natural gas deposits, and that's where we get our helium. If you've ever inhaled helium, the protons and neutrons that were inside you used to be inside the nucleus of a uranium atom, probably somewhere around Amarillo, Texas where the richest helium in the field in the world is. And I am not making this up. Since World War I, the US has been stockpiling helium near Amarillo, and that is the main source of the world's helium. And it's a supply that's being depleted very rapidly. Helium has the lowest melting and boiling point. It's uh, irreplaceable as a coolant for superconducting magnets in MRI and at the LHC. It's used to pressurize space shuttle fuel tanks in uh, manufacture of semiconductors. It's not just for birthday parties and blimps. So in recent decades, 
Demand is up, production is down, prices have been rising, suppliers have been rationing helium. And, uh, you know, so what? Ah, yes, even with recycling, because uh, uranium doesn't decay fast enough to keep up with the demand. Even with recycling, we're gonna be through with our supply in a decade, and the world might be helium free by the end of the century. So. What are we gonna do? Do you wanna live in a world, do you want your children to live in a world where balloons don't float? Now, it's not like me to leave on such a downer note. I'm a stand-up comedian, not a stand-up tragedian, so I thought I could leave you with a joke. A helium atom walks into a bar. The bartender says, we don't serve noble gases in this bar. The helium doesn't react. But you should recycle helium. Do it for the children and the physicists and the children of the physicists. Good night.